to be in a fixed area, a fixed object. It's kind of got like a break. Hello guys, my name is Larry. And first off, let me thank you for stopping in the channel and taking a moment to view this video. Today, we are going to be going over a few of the things that, uh, a few of the accessories or tools, whatever you want to call them, that you can use on a four and a half inch angle grinder and how to select the proper tool for the proper job. Now, I know there's probably going to be a lot more out there than what I'm going to show you today, but there is a lot of stuff that I'm going to show you in this video that will probably be helpful for the beginner. If you're advanced, I'm sure that you won't, uh, this won't help you, but if you're new to this type of work, some of these little tips I'm going to show you will, are tools, will really help you advance in your, your project. These are just a few of them. We're going to be using some Makita grinders and we're going to be using some Drill Master for this, uh, the demonstration purposes. Uh, so stick around, let me show you just some more of these tools. This is just a couple of them. Let's make this happen. Now before we get started, I might say we might have a little background noise. Uh, I've got to have the doors closed here in the warehouse, but uh, the fan is behind me here. And at 100 something degrees, it's pretty hot. So it's going to be inevitable that I'm going to have to shoot this video with a little bit of fan noise. And there's going to be a little shadow over the picture like you see here. But uh, under the circumstances, that's the best we can do. Well now guys, first thing you're going to want to do is if you're buying a tool for a grinder, four and a half inch angle grinder, first thing you want to look at is the adapters. And this is a couple of them right here. One of them sits on the bottom down here and it will have actually two ears here that lock in around the shaft right here. You can see that, you, see you put that down in there and you rotate it till you feel it lock in place and it won't go any further. <coughs> Without being fixed, that means that whatever tool you're putting on top of there will not be able to spin freely. It will stay tight. So if you have a 5 8 arbor, make sure you use 5 8 tools uh, versus a bigger arbor. You'll have to make that adjustment on the adapters. There's different adapters out there for different types of grinders. So that is real important. Let's put this back together here. And we're going to, for the video purposes, we're going to put this one on here. You see how that adapter actually fits down inside there. I'm going to try to get this where it's not blurred out. But that adapter outer diameter right there needs to make sure it fills this hole up. Or else, when this is moving around and around, it'll spin and it'll bounce all over the place. It will not be centered. So that's real important. So let's put that back on there and make sure it locks down all the way. And then get this out of the way, of course. And then we're going to put that on there like so. And we're going to tighten it down. Now on this old cheap drill master uh, grinder, I'll move the camera up just a little bit. There we go. You've got a locking button on top right here, this red button. Now you spin that around until you feel it lock. And this is going to be the tool that they send with this one. They're going to make sure it's snug and tight. That way it won't come loose. This wrench is provided with the drill master. Now, I'm going to explain what some of these are. And then we're actually going to get a piece of wood and a piece of metal. And we're going to show you how they, how they function. This is pretty self-explanatory. Knotty wire wheel brush. Now this one has a 5 8 RP, uh, 5 8 arbor, screws straight onto the shaft. Maximum RPM is 12,500. Used for many different things. Now we use this for actually cleaning the edges of, of the live edge off of, of a say a log slab, uh, cleaning metal, many different uses. And I'll show you a few of those today. This tool here is actually used, and I'm not really sure of the name of this one. I've had this one for quite some time and haven't used it yet, but I've used several others that are like it. Um, it's got, it's solid steel, and it's, it's pretty heavy. It's almost uh, probably three quarters of a pound to a pound. It's got a bunch of little nibs on the side of it, little nipples. And what that does, it gets down into the wood, and you're able to create a sculpture or a divot in the wood, or if you're trying to carve something out, this is, is great for that. And we'll show you how that works in just a minute. And this one is used for wood also. We'll try to get it at an angle where you can see it better. It's got six blades on it, and it's probably close to a little of a pound. 
and it fits straight over the shaft and you have to lock it down with a nut of course. But this is used for carving out wood. It's very it's a very aggressive tool and will move, remove some material very, very quickly. The downside to it is you really better hang on to your grinder because when it bites, it bites. This will make sure you eat your post toasties and your weedies before you start with this one. If you plan on having a lengthy project, you're gonna need it. <clears throat> okay, this is what they call a holy galahad. Used to have a tag on it, but you can't already see it now. They make, that I know of, three different types, a fine, a medium, and a coarse. Now this one here is the medium. This is not used for metal, it's used for wood carving. Same thing, it'll use the adapter that the drill master has, or the Makita, the same one as this Makita uses. If you're into woodworking, man, this is great. I use it for many different wood carving sculptures, uh, trimming up the live edge on wood. Kind of multi-purpose for all type of woodwork. Color distinguishes normally the type fine, medium, or coarse. I know there's red, there's green, there's yellows, and there's purples. I don't know. Uh, this one for sure is a medium. But yeah, a handy little tool to have. Now this will also fit on your four and a half inch grinders. This is an Vanti Pro, and it is used for cutting stone, marble. I'm not sure what it says on the back. It's a four and a half inch, mostly ceramic type materials, stone or brick. Maximum RPM 13,000. Pretty handy little tool. This one is used for concrete work. You got a piece of concrete you need to polish up, buff up. Polish the edges. You see here it's got little diamonds embedded in it. Same thing. We'll fit with an adapter on a four and a half inch angle grinder. Now this is a Makita blade. Now this is a metal cutting blade and if you're going to run this on a four and a half inch grinder you're going to have to take the guard off of it like I did on this one. The reason I say that is if you put this on there, you see you're gonna go outside the guard. When you do use this, make sure you wear safety gear. Glasses, uh, you know, earmuffs, everything. It's pretty noisy when you're cutting through sheet metal or metal. Good cutting blade, diamond tip. Five and three eighths diameter. So yes, it'll go outside the guard. You'll have to take your guard off if you're going to run this on a four and a half inch grinder. Strictly metal cutting. Cutting rebar, sheet metal. We use it a lot on corrugated steel, uh, building materials, trim, soffit work, and metal buildings. Great for cutting metal on. This one, I bet you've never seen. I don't know the exact name. But the actual paperwork is taken off of it. But it's some type of silicate wheel. And actually what I use these for is I have a sawmill. And I made me a tool to put this on there because see it's got an angle to it right here. And that fits in there perfect with my blade. So I'm able to put these on my homemade blade sharpener, sawmill blade sharpener, and I use it to sharpen my sawmill blades. Quite expensive little tool but very accurate in a fixed uh, environment. Now you can use these also, but you'll have to get you some type of adapter to adapt it to the four and a half inch grinder. It's a Sandblaster 3M. It says it fits four and a half inch and five inch angle grinder. Now, I don't know how you're gonna do that without the, the tool to screw it on there. Because it's, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of like a spiral lock half turn spiral lock on it and it's like a scotch bite pad great for polishing stuff up real quick removing rust debris just cleaning anything that needs to be cleaned off anything that you can use scotch bite on then of course everybody knows about the cutoff wheels 
probably one of the most commonly used items out there. Now they make different thicknesses. This is 1 16th and it's a four and a half inch. We'll show you how that works in just a few minutes. And then your grinder, grinder stone. This one's only four inch. I bought a bunch of these on sale. Never heard us have too many of those in stock. And on the old drill master, we've got a sandpaper disc. I call it a flapper disc. See how the sandpaper's laid in there, stacked on top of each other all the way around? This will really polish up some stuff really, really quick. Save you lots of time cleaning. Now let's get a few of these things hooked up. Okay, this one's already hooked up. And we're gonna show you how this one actually does on metal. You see here, we got us a piece of old square, two by two, I think it's no, inch and a half by inch and a half. And we're gonna take the flap of this first. And I'll show you how this works out. You see how that polish that up? It doesn't take but a couple of seconds. That was less than 15 seconds to clean that up, polish it up like steel. It is fantastic, perfect just like that. Now that's what the sandpaper is. Now this is uh, 120 grit. These are a lot fancy, that's what they're called. Four and a half by seven eighths. And uh, EN 13743, they're called zirconia flap discs. Maximum RPM is 13,300. Cannot exceed that. Now the next tool is going to be the grinder. I'm sure everybody used a grinder one time or another. And let me show you what happens here. As you can see there, it ate the metal up very quickly, but the finish is not as smooth as that. So let's go back and let's take the flapper disc. See the difference? Went from a real rough finish to a pretty smooth. Now if you went down with the flapper disc, sandpaper flapper disc to a, say a 400 grit, this would be just like a mirror finish. It would be beautiful. So if you got any projects you're trying to clean the metal up on, hey, that works very well for that. Now I'm gonna take this out of the fixture right now, and we're gonna show you what a cutoff tool would do. All right, let's make sure we got it plugged in here. All right, we're gonna use this old drill master. And we're gonna use this cutoff disc. That's what I call them. They probably call it something else, but I call them cutoff disc. I always wear eyeglasses, hearing protection, stuff like that when using these tools. Practice safety. Uh, remember that when you're using something like this, pieces of metal are flying off and sparks are going to be flying everywhere. Now, I'm not gonna reach down there on the floor and pick that up. That thing is super hot, but you see how I cut that off real pretty and flush? Now, you're not gonna cut no half inch steel with it. It'll take forever to do that, but however, it will cut it. Okay, now we're gonna start getting into the stuff that's gonna get nasty and dirty, all this wood flying. Next we're gonna have is the Holy Galahad, okay? Now, this, like I said, this is medium, but just to give you an idea of what this is used for, I found a piece of old board here, and we're gonna see what we can do with it.
All right, you see how fast that took that out of there. Now this is a medium, not the fine, not the coarse, but the medium. Uh, if you go to a finer one, it'll be less aggressive and it'll be a lot smoother finish. However, you can cut it out with this one and come back and sand it out if you wanted to. But that's the Holy Galahad. Great tool for a lot of woodworking projects. All right, well, I couldn't find the correct adapter for this one. Uh, I know I've got one here somewhere, it's just probably out of reach right now. But I was able to tighten it up with this. But you see that that's not the right adapter. You need an adapter that sits down inside here. It doesn't come out here as high as the blades are. You'll only be cutting with this outer edge right now. So if you're going to run this tool, you must have an adapter that goes down inside or smaller that sits inside the cupped area. Say for instance like here, it needs to go down inside that for it to be efficient. But I'll show you how it works. I'll just try to use the edges. That is a very, very aggressive tool. And it does bite whenever you put that into the wood. Even though it's only hogging out part of this outer edge, being this is protruding out to where it's not letting it go down as deep as it should. So it's very important that the right adapter be used on this tool right here in order for it to be efficient 100%. Well, while I was trying to scramble up my adapters, I did find a few of them. But none of these are the correct one for those tools that I'm trying to demonstrate in this video. But I think you could probably figure out how they work, especially this one. This one is a tool that I really, really like, and uh, I've got two or three of them. This is a brand new one. But again, if you don't have the right adapter to go down inside there, like that one might work, but it's too small. None of these other will fit inside there. And this one's too small. It's not going to work. And that's the base. And that's the other base. So I don't have those. But while I was digging these up, I did find a tool that I didn't show you at the beginning of the video. Now this is another good woodworking one. It's kind of got like abrasive attached to the steel part of the wheel. And while I've got this out, I'll show you what it'll do. Now it is pretty aggressive as well. And if you're trying to create a sculpture, you're trying to you know, cut a hole into something or a divot or a valley into a piece of wood or log or furniture or anything like that, these work great. So let's show you how this works. You know, where were these tools uh, 15 years ago? I guess technology wasn't that far advanced. But you see how it polished that out pretty good there. So that's a good tool to have in your arsenal if you're a woodworking guy. These tools really, a lot of these tools that I'm showing you really help the woodworking people out a lot. Okay, now I've got the knotty wire wheel. And this thing just screws straight onto it. You don't need any kind of adapter whatsoever. Now I'm gonna do a little bit on this wood to show you what, it, what happens when you use it on wood. And then I'm gonna go get a piece of metal and put it up here and we'll do the metal next.
As you can see here, with the 90 wire wheel, it builds up a lot of heat, turning it fast. And it kind of burns the wood a little bit there in certain areas. So yeah, it smooths it out, but it leaves that burn finish on it. So that might be something you think about whenever you're working with the knotty wire wheel on a piece of straight wood like this. Now, we use a lot of, uh, and let me get a piece of that, be right back. Now I've got a, a piece of live edge cedar here that I cut with my sawmill. And a lot of times you see this bark and stuff that's along here. We like to clean that off, or you know, the customer sometimes wants it cleaned off. And we have found that this knotty wire wheel works pretty good. Now for the purpose of video, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand and one hand. Uh, it really needs to be in a fixed area, a fixed object like a vise, but uh, it's kind of hard for me to put it in a vise to show you how, at the same time how it works. So let me try to do this, and maybe with some bloopers and blunders in this part, but let's try. Okay, well I think that gave you some kind of idea. You see it stripped all this old, old loose bark off of there. This is the loose stuff. It stripped it all out and made it pretty smooth. And as long as you're going, the knotty wire wheel brush is going with the grain, such as like this right here. You usually won't put any cross hatches in it. And it'll come out real pretty and smooth. Now let's get a piece of metal. Let's see what that thing does on the piece of metal. Alright, we got that same old piece of square tube in here. And we're going back to the knotty wire wheel. Let me get the camera out there a little bit better closer. There we go. How about that? Lined it up real pretty and smooth. Now, between all three of these, I think the knotty wire wheel is the, is the prettiest, the smoothest, and it'd be very easy to weld that. So the knotty wire wheel is definitely a pretty heavy tool to have in your toolbox, especially if you're doing something like this. Okay. Now this tool I'm about to show you here is one of the most aggressive that you're probably going to use out of everything that you see in this video. And it does take a little bit of setting up. It's got two separate blades, I mean two separate plates, one here and one here. This chain has to be set up inside here just perfectly centered whenever you're tightening these two together. And it's uh, directional. So if you've got these facing the wrong direction, it's not going to cut. You have to make sure that it's turning this way and it'll tell you on this plate here, underneath it, which direction these need to be running. So in this case, it's gonna be turning this way, we're gonna be cutting the same way. This one, like I said, safety, 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 guys. This thing will eat you alive. So be very careful with this if you buy one of these. Uh, this is a chainsaw type uh, cutting tool. And uh, I'm not sure what it says on it. Let me look here, King Arthur's Tools. Uh, top made in USA so good USA product safety glasses hearing protection face protection you need it when you use this tool let me show you what it does it's very aggressive be careful with it
you see it didn't take but a, less than a minute to come in and carve this piece of wood out. Let me put it up closer to the camera. Show you a little bit more about what it did. It's basically a chainsaw on steroids and a four and a half inch die grinder. If you're a woodworker and you're trying to do anything like this, that's a tool you must have from King Arthur. Now, I won't be able to demonstrate how this works because I'm not, I don't have the setup ready to go. However, or shall I say, won't be able to demonstrate this one either, but I think you can figure that out. Scotch, Scotch wool, Scotch bright. And if you got your adapter, you can make that work as well. I won't be doing any concrete work, but there's what you use for cuts wet or dry. Stone, stone, slate, or the product simmer. Again, we covered this earlier, cutting steel. I like to use it explicitly for cutting sheet metal. Concrete work. Probably use it on stone, tile, and other things like that too. And the adapters. And of course, this one, I wasn't able to demonstrate it, but I think you get a feel from the other ones, looking at this one, what this one is capable of doing. <clears throat> well, guys. You know, in today's video, we used the Drill Master from Harbor Freight. Cheap little tool, $10, $12 right now, I think probably $13 maybe. This is one that's three years old. It's been a very handy little tool for what I paid for it. Get what you pay for. And of course, the old Makita had this thing for probably six, seven years. Been one of the best little four and a half inch angle grinders I've ever had, but Again, you're going to pay a lot for this. I'm not sure. I think at the time I paid $50, $60 for it. It's probably closer to $100 today. But very reliable. And I must say, less vibration in this tool and less heat buildup in this area than on these here. And this, actually, this thing here actually has a little crack in the case. I mean, it's still working fine. However, when you work this for an extended period of time on the Drill Master from Harbor Freight, this area gets really, really hot. You know, you can't use it for, you know, five minutes or longer. I tried cutting some wood out with it and it got pretty warm right here in this area. The Makita did not do that. Well, I guess that concludes the video. And I hope that I shared some information that, that was uh, helpful in one form or fashion. Hope you gained a little bit of knowledge out of it. We're going to be putting many more tool, tool reviews together on chainsaws and weed eaters and you name it. If you got anything you'd like to post a video about, post it down in the comments down below. We'll also put tags in the description or links to where you can purchase some of these products at on eBay and Amazon. But yeah, we ask that you hit the like, thumbs up, and subscribe button in the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.